Welcome back to Not So Grand Garage. Today, we got my buddy's 49 CJ3A in the shop. And uh, we're gonna go over it a little bit. We got to service it out for the year. And uh, yeah, just get it ready to go. So let's get at it. Windshield unstrapped. I'm going to lift the windshield back up into place and anchor it down so it doesn't fall. There we go. And open her on up and all the way back carefully. And here we go. Original flathead. It's uh hasn't really been touched much. We've added the uh, aftermarket oil filter for it, set up by Fram, which uh, this engine does not run an oil filter otherwise. But uh, yeah, pretty basic, but uh, it runs great. It's reliable. So we're gonna service it out. We're gonna change the oil and the differentials, and uh, set it on the road. Ooh, slide under here. Knock this massive drain plug loose. We run a 1540 diesel oil in this engine and uh, seems to work pretty well. Holds good oil pressure. Uh, only gets driven in the summer months, typically. And we change it out once a year pretty well. There we go. Only holds around a gallon of oil. Yeah. We'll drain this out first. We'll let it sit, go up top, pull that uh, filter canister apart and uh, change that filter out. 7 8 wrench. Now this is just a bypass filter set up on this. This doesn't use a primary oil filter at all, which is uh, kind of strange to most people, but they didn't come with them from the factory. And we'll let that drain down for a bit. The filter I use in this is a Wix 51006. It uh, didn't used to come with the correct O-ring for this canister. But it looks like they have uh, started including the correct one. So, got new canister. I'm gonna take a little oil, lube both these O-rings, drop the new one in, along with a new O-ring. Oh. 
pop the uh, cold o-ring off. And set the new one in place. Make sure it sits all the way down in there. And get a little oil on it on both sides. And we should be good. Snug it back down. It doesn't have to be super tight or anything like that. Just uh, snug it up, get a good seal on that o ring. Once I fill it back up with oil, of course, we'll check it for leaks and everything just to be sure. But uh, yeah. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're pretty well done draining out down here. So I'll clean this fill, or clean the drain plug off. Make sure our little crush washer's in good shape. And go on and put the drain plug back in. Hey, man. and just lightly snug this up and i know you're probably freaking out because i'm using a crescent wrench on a little drain plug but this is a massive drain plug and uh it doesn't uh doesn't have to be super tight all you gotta do is snug it up going back up top back up top we're gonna fill her up with Rotella T5 1540. It uh, seems to like this. Been using it for uh, the last three or four years, I'd say. Haven't had any issues out of it. I got the oil filled back up and uh, I'm gonna fire it up with a build oil pressure, let it run for a few minutes and uh, check it over again. And we'll go underneath and uh, service front and rear differentials on it and call it good. So uh, let it run for a little bit, built the oil pressure real good, and uh, haven't checked yet, but I'm not seeing any leaks on the canister, and I'm not seeing any new leaks down here. 
So, should be good to go there. I'm gonna go on and check the oil, make sure it's full, top it off if it needs it, and uh, drain these differentials, get them filled back up. Should be good. So after running it a little bit, letting that oil filter canister refill and everything, this is about a quart low, so I'm gonna top it up. Now we're gonna go through and grease all the steering components on the front, grease the shackles all the way around, and then uh, change the oil in front and rear differentials. Take for a drive. Now I went through, uh, it's been a couple years ago now, but replaced all the leaf springs, the shackles, pretty well everything that moves front and back on this thing for him. And uh, all the shackles take grease and everything like they're supposed to. Uh, everything was frozen up before and the bushings and everything were shot but uh yeah now that all that's been done drives really well for what it is and uh everything's greasable like it should be and uh yeah greasing all these points really helps these bushings last of course all your steering components last a lot longer when they've been greased properly and uh yeah just doing some basic stuff uh we probably don't need to service the differentials every year but it's cheap insurance. I mean, 80, 90, he gets a two and a half gallon jug and services everything out. So it's not really a big deal cost wise and it's just cheap insurance. Now, anytime you're gonna service a differential, a transmission, something like that, that just has a, a drain plug and a fill plug, always break his fill plug loose first, just to make sure it comes out. Because uh, if you drain it and can't get the fill plug out, you're gonna be in a situation you don't wanna be in. And I know these will come out, because I take them out fairly regularly. But uh, yeah, always take your fill plug out first. That way you know, because uh, hey, if you can't get the fill plug out, don't drain it. A little bit of old oil in there is better than no oil at all. And this may have some water in it because he does go play in this thing from time to time. This thing's a driver. Eh. A little bit of moisture, but not much. Oil looks fairly clean. But, uh, I'll let that drain for a little bit. I'm going to wipe this fill plug off and fill it back up and move to the back. Now I went on and serviced both front and rear differentials. Uh, didn't video servicing the rear, it's the same story. Pull the uh, fill plug first, pull the drain plug, dump the oil out, fill it back up until it runs out the fill plug. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So no point in videoing it twice, but I am going to uh, check transmission fluid level. I'm not gonna service it because uh, I serviced this last year and he does not take this thing through deep water. Uh, maybe water comes up to the diff sometimes, but it's not ever going over the transmission. So not worried about water getting in it. And uh, the oil in the front and rear diffs was clean when it came out. So I'm not too worried about what's in the transmission, but I do want to make sure it's full. Same with the transfer case, which I believe it shares oil on this one, but I'll have to look. It's been a little while, so I don't hardly remember. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull the fill plug on the side of the trans and uh, check it out and make sure it's full. Top it up and take it for a drive. 
But the transmission was about a quart, quart and a half low. So glad we got that topped off, which it does leak a little bit. The owner knows that. And it has uh, since this thing got put together. But a quart and a half of oil in a year isn't, uh, isn't too bad. And like I said, it's, this thing's not a daily driver. But uh, it does get driven quite a bit. But uh, we'll get the, uh, get the hood fastened down. I'm going to go on and uh, clamp the other side of the windshield up while I take it for a drive. Owner likes to leave the windshield down because uh, he typically tools around on the back road and stuff. But it's getting dark out my way and I don't really feel like having a face full of bugs. So I'm going to anchor the other side of the windshield down, fire this thing up and take it for a drive. Good oil pressure. A little cold nature, but uh, eh, is what it is. nice little drive uh, stayed cool oil pressure staying up idle oil pressure seems a little low I'm gonna check specs on that but uh, seems to be running fine no odd noises or anything like that runs down the road 40 45 mile an hour real nice so uh, that's about as far as I want to push this anyways but uh, I'm gonna check it over for leaks I haven't seen anything yet but uh, going to drop the hood and strap the windshield back down call the owner let them know it's ready to go so that said i'm gonna cut this off here if you haven't already please subscribe we appreciate you watching